This week on the show, photographer Hal Schmidt. I'm model Roxanne Kelly, And I'm photographer Brian Fisher. And this is Model Photography Showcase. Hal was one of my first photographers. Really? Yes. What a classic oh, episode, guys. We were so happy to talk to Hal back in the day. Absolutely. The day he's getting a while back. It was 2013. It yes. was a great episode. Wonderful. And we hope you enjoy this classic episode of Model Photography Showcase. Hey, Roxanne, how are you doing? Doing awesome. How are you doing? Not bad. It's another lovely day in the central coast of California. Just can't wait for winter to get here when it gets 70 degrees. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to winter. Oh, there's nothing like a brisk, sometimes 68 degrees. I guess I do like my fireplace. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> ah, who do you have for us today? Well, we have Hal here. Um, he does the workshops, the light photography workshops. I have and... heard of them. Actually, yeah, just when those south. things are going, photographers are as common as like squirrels. <laughs> well, all right, yeah, squirrels, no doubt. How are you doing, Hal? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit of how you ended up in photography. You know, it's it's kind of an interesting story how, how I ended up doing this because I never really had any intention of becoming a photographer. In fact, when I when I bought the school that we have here in Los Osos, uh, I did not even own a camera. So that was a little bit different. Uh, I, I got into the business because my girlfriend at the time, now wife, was working for a gentleman named George Lepp. And an opportunity came up to purchase his business, which was the Lepp Institute in Los Osos. And I thought it would be a good business opportunity. And Victoria really seemed to like it. So I figured, hey, no worries. I'm getting out of the Navy at that point. I was just finishing up my, my second tour at, at Top Gun up in Fallon, Nevada. And it looked like it'd be a great thing to do where Victoria could run the school when photography was her passion. I could come down here and make wine full time. And this would work out really well. Um, that, that plan was really on track until she put a camera in my hand for the first time. And then I got hooked. Um, nice. Well, it is so, addicting. <laughs> well, Lep is, so. a, Lep is a very well-respected name. You really walked into a gem. Yeah, I think we, we ended up with a really good thing here where George had built a, a tremendous, not only business, but, a, but a, an incredible instructional facility. Um, we've expanded that now out to 5,000 square feet of, of everything, photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, printing, you name it. But it, it was all based on George's foundation, uh, an absolutely tremendous photographer, still is. And he's been, I think he was instrumental in really moving a lot of the, the, the digital uh, scene forward because he embraced it early and taught a lot of people how, how to do the basics through advanced techniques, um, whether it's in camera, Photoshop, or whatnot. Just, just an all-in-all all neat guy. So how many courses are you running at any given time? Well, being workshop-based, we go anywhere from two to five days. And usually per month, we're running maybe three or four per month. It just kind of depends on what else is going on in our lives. Uh, I do a lot of other things with the wine I already mentioned, but do a lot of performance consulting for the energy industry and then just, just other stuff going on. So usually three to four courses per month. Those are anywhere from two to five days. Uh, most of the courses we run are here in, in the Los Osos facility. Uh, some of the stuff we do, though, is on location. For example, we run two or three Alaska workshops each year, uh, a couple in Texas, all sorts of good stuff. That's Excellent. wonderful. Your studio is beautiful, too. I've been there. It's it's really nice. In fact, I've been to your workshops, too. Yeah, you've, you've taken part in them all. I have. Uh, no, we, we have. We've been very fortunate to have a – we inherited a great facility from George. We turned it into something, I think, a, a little bit better. And in terms of coming to a, a place to shoot, and if we're talking you know, model-specific, we've got just about everything you could, could ever need in, in one location – uh, many studios aren't all that big. Uh, ours is about 1,500 square feet. So, so we we've got the space, we have the equipment, we have the the dedicated photographers that come up. We have incredible hair, makeup, and and it's very talented models. So, all, all together, the package is incredible when you come here to photograph. Yeah, the uh, the reputation you built in the photographic community is outstanding. Well, thank you, thank you. So, give us the origin of the. Uh, the California Photo Festival. I uh, I became aware of it several years back, and it seems to be just on the march like an army. 
You know, it's going real well. This is our fourth year. We're about two weeks out. October 7th through 11 this year is five days of, of everything photography. It all started primarily with Victoria. She wanted to do, and we've, we've been around to different festivals and events in the industry across the country and, and thought, why not do it here? So we had, we had formulated this in our heads, and it really wasn't until one of our, our primary festival instructors, a gentleman named Rick Salmon, he, he pushed us over the edge in a, in a good way and, and made us take that final leap to say, you know what, let's do this. And the intention of the festival, you know, from the get-go, and I think we've maintained uh, a course fairly true to that, is that we wanted it to mimic and, and reproduce what we did here at Light which are small hands-on workshops with industry professionals where people can really learn. And it's not about coming to say, oh, I worked with so-and-so and, -so and I, I was able to watch them make a picture. It was no, they, they showed me how to use my gear, how to work all of these lights and how to make beautiful pictures myself. And sometimes they might not even touch a camera. So we wanted to take that and make it a little bit bigger scale. So we bring in between 200 and 300 attendees and we have 20 instructors, which yields a very small class size, uh, personalized instruction. It, it is, as some people say, there's just a special vibe about the festival and it's all about the attendees learning. So how do you manage having so many classes? Do you have multiple locations or? We do. We, we have about, I think this year we have in the neighborhood of 190 different classes over wow. those five days. And we use probably 30 different locations across the week. That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah, the, the, this year we've expanded quite a bit into night photography because it's one of those those very hot things right now. So we're running from pre-sunset until probably five, six hours after sunset every day all across the county. So when I get my studio built, will you be taking it over for a classroom? If necessary, <laughs> we'll certainly do that. If you offer it up, we could probably be there. I could arrange that. Given the class of instructors you bring in, it'd be an excellent way to get a free class. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we bring some good folks, and it, it's always been our intention that we, we want instructors who don't just have a tremendous portfolio and amazing body of work, but instead we want people who can connect with the with the students, with the attendees, and, and really teach them something. Because I could sit and look at pretty pictures all day, but it doesn't make me better. Whereas if we bring in someone who can make a strong image and teach someone else how to do it, that's the kind of people we want, and we've been fortunate to have them all, all four years, and, and we've got a list of people who want to come. Wonderful. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the things that I pull from in the past, when I was in photo school in the early '90s, we sat and I mean we went through thousands and thousands of slides because there was that just expose yourself to good work element, and the internet has really sort of put that all around where. You don't need any of that in your school, and you can get, you have an infinite resource of good images to look at. Now what you need is somebody to connect all of those parts together. Exactly. There are, there are and there's, there's certainly something to be said for looking at strong images, and honestly, there's something to be said for looking at bad images as well. Oh, yeah. So that way you, you know what, what works, what does not work, and maybe what you want to emulate and build is your style, mm -hmm. but it's not immediately intuitive, even with all of the incredible technology out there, both in camera and all the after capture processing. It's not immediately intuitive how you can make that strong image every single time in a consistent, repeatable manner. And that's where our instructors, as well as what we do here at Light, I think really bridges that gap where we can we can envision this image, maybe something we've seen in the past or like something we've seen in the past. And then we translate, okay, we take our uh, our gear, whatever it might be, uh, cameras, lenses, lights, tripods, our hair, makeup, our models, our whatever it is, and put them all together, and we create something. And it's not a it's not a lucky grab; it is by design, and we do it in a consistent, repeatable fashion. Well, we would love to have some of our listeners attend your workshop and then give us feedback. Absolutely. <laughs> so, if you are on the enhanced version of the podcast, don't forget that you need to command click the icon in the top of the iTunes menu to see the slideshow. If you're on Windows, that's a control click. And we're off to our first image in the set, which I I just found hilarious. <laughs> well, Brian, I'm really surprised that you didn't choose this one as the last. Well, Since it's a butt shot. Because you as tell our people normal. to take their clothes off at the end, I'll just get into <laughs> hanky-panky. Like we need them to concentrate. 
get on track. This is such a fun old style. I like the uh, the letters and the whole the whole idea is really fun. Where did you get this idea? You know, we, I got this from uh, really from Victoria. We've had this little this little item around for a while, and, and this was from a really fun shoot we we had with a, a tremendous model. And I think she had made a comment that no matter how we started, whatever we envisioned, we always kind of ended up to the same thing where uh, our model is wearing almost next to nothing and usually heels and a smile. And so we thought it might be fun just to, to play around with one of the, the things that happens quite often in our studio is uh, go ahead, please remove your clothes and let the light really play across your body well. Uh, so that, that's something that uh, I'm not sure if I want this sign in my studio or whether I want a T-shirt. <laughs> I think we can sell that. I'll bet we could get that on a t-shirt pretty easily. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you know, yours is the first studio I've taken my clothes off in. Oh. Well, well thank you. You've inspired uh, Roxanne to greatness. <laughs> well, that, that's usually Victoria. I'm I'm not very good at that, but uh, v- Victoria is, so. I, I think I embarrassed you. <laughs> <laughs> I like to just have a reputation that causes the model's clothes to fall off. That's <laughs> like know. tequila. No, not tequila. No nope. reputation. Yeah, it's like, like tequila, tequila, but sober. Yeah, but tequila has that reputation. Oh, oh, oh I see. You drink yeah. tequila and your clothes fall. So I should keep tequila with me. You're saying? No, not necessarily. Oh, but yeah, you could wear I a get T-shirt that in says trouble. it. <laughs> Yeah, that's usually a bad idea in the studio, but <laughs> I agree. But being the tequila photographers, though, that's not bad at all. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> I, ooh, there's a T-shirt too. I am the tequila of photographers. I like that. That is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, this next one is really an odd pose, but turned out excellent. I yeah. love the lighting. Um, where did you have a softbox uh, overhead? No, I think what we did on this were two. Th- these are actually two strip lights. Uh, two okay. strip soft boxes, one by four. Uh, in this case, I don't believe they were gridded. So slightly, they were set up to doing more standing poses. Uh, th- this model is, is remarkably flexible and uh, just just a real pleasure to work with. And so we're doing most things kind of kind of straight up and down vertical. And, and as she comes over like this towards the camera, that that's what allows most of that light to spill on the back of the head and the upper shoulders. And it must have been decently close because you're backlighting the hands and you're forelighting the body. Yes, it was a, uh, th- this was a good shoot, uh, yeah. tremendous model. And, and we tend towards, well, maybe I just tend towards, I really love a black and white high contrast uh, using really off axis light coming in from, you know, if you're looking camera straight at, straight at your model, coming in from 90 degrees, 120 degrees off, just, just does some amazing things for the body. It yeah, does. It worked well. I like the curves that she has. <laughs> they look really nice in that uh-huh. image. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I love this I style. I have seen this picture before. <laughs> I have. This is really a neat one. I love the hat balancing on the feet and her pose. This is such a hard pose to pull off. She did a great job. She did a great job in this, and it was it kind of revisited an oldie. We shot this quite a few years ago, um, actually right after we were just starting. But I thought it needed to be updated just a little bit, so... Went through a reprocessed and really like how it turned out. Uh, I was just up in the Bay Area with a a guy who was shooting pinup all the time, and he got me back into some of the uh, the gradient circles behind the model. So I figured I'll throw throw one of those in there. But I, I thought it was just kind of a fun little image, bit of a throwback. She has got a great smile, really yeah, good, ab- absolutely great smile. A tremendous model to work with, and she had fun with this. The the retro look she can rock like almost no one else I've ever seen. Um, yeah, this this will sound odd, but I mean, this when, when she throws the attitude on and, and really gets the look going, it's one of the few models I've ever seen turn a gay man's head and just whips <laughs> it around. I mean, she's that kind of model. So nice. it was uh, it was tremendously fun. Uh, light on this was just a single uh, single uh, softbox. It was a big octobank, nice, five nice foot octobank. Very bright. Very nice. I like it. Oh yeah. These silhouettes you're famous for. Yeah. You know, we do a lot of silhouettes. Um, in fact, that was we, we had done a big silhouette project that we initially tried to push out just after the, the iPad was introduced. But I won't get, since you guys are podcasting with Apple, I won't go too much into them. But uh, the, the project ended up not working out. But we made some amazing images as a result and really, I think, became incredibly comfortable shooting silhouettes and, and partial silhouettes. So th- this was a, a model from Los Osos. Uh, incredible attitude, great, great figure, uh, a wonderful mother to her kids. 
and, and we just had some fun. Nice. Well, uh, to give our audience a hint about Apple, we produce four feeds to make Apple happy. And uh, I have known people that have gotten away with murder uh, with the iPad uh, publications and people that have sneezed hard and been banned. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I believe this was called uh, obscene and degrading. Oh, so. nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they good. can't just say no, thank you. That would be too easy. <laughs> yeah, I was very offended. <laughs> and your you mother dislikes you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was a, a fun shoot here. And, and, and for this shot, it's actually a, uh, we did this one with a, a three by four foot softbox behind the model. Yeah. And that way she stands in front, you shoot. And you can get some really nice silhouettes that way. And they, it's about the easiest lighting you will ever do. Mm -hmm. That's actually a pretty tight zone to be working in. Exactly. And that was the intention where we, we kind of had figured out what this shot would be. And we took a, a few others of that, that general, uh, you know, upper torso through, um, uh, right at, right about the uh, mid chest level, we just did shot a whole bunch like that. And it, it can't get easier because you're looking at, uh, it, it, you know, you tight end, we're probably shooting to 200 millimeters or so. And so all you're seeing is the white background and whatever your shape, your model puts yourself in. So Fantastic. A real simple way to shoot silhouette. You can get creative, as creative as you want. <laughs> so I got to ask about this headpiece. Yes. What is that? Where'd that come from? Uh, that is just one of the, we, we maintain a collection of masks here at, at Light in the studio because it just does, not only I think are they fun to photograph, but they're they're fun to play with. And one of the things that you can oftentimes, or I'll oftentimes struggle with when, when working with models is that sometimes that rapport is not there, that playfulness isn't there. But if you can put a mask into the mix somehow, it, it's hard to be wearing a mask and not assume some other type of persona or have some type of more, a more playful attitude in the studio. So, so we keep these around. This one here was for a workshop we did. It's probably been four years ago now. And we really started to work with a few props to take something and make it just a little bit interesting. And the model saw this this mask and gravitated towards it, and it worked out. You know, that, that is a classically great tip is you can give somebody some anonymity and they're allowed to exercise their imagination a bit. You know, it's, it's amazing what that mask will do. It's fantastic. <laughs> and stockings. You got the gloves and the stockings, and I like that. I like the um, that idea. Yeah, and, and if you – and the, the kind of the dress, if you will, on that, that's just fabric. And that's another one of those great things to have around if you're doing model-type work is just a lot of different fabrics. You could, you could drive yourself uh, into bankruptcy trying to buy dress after dress and shirt after shirt, but uh, a few different good bolts of cloth – you can really end up with some amazing things and nicely draped, something that's comfortable, uh, revealing, not revealing, whatever you want, and your model just plays with it, and it works great. Yeah. Nice. Here's another one of these uh, silhouettes. Obviously a larger softbox. Uh, it, it is, and this is uh, another technique we'll use for, although she is, happens to be squatting down, for full body silhouettes. It, you can do it, uh, obviously, by putting your – uh, your, your subject in front of any background. And if you blast enough light onto that background, it's going to go white. Uh, but what we did here was we maintain, we have a lot of, of plexiglass at the studio. And so this is a four by eight sheet of white plexiglass. And we put that up between two stands. And in effect, you then, and when you put a light or two behind it, and this is lit with two lights, you now have a four foot by eight foot softbox behind your subject. That is a lot better than uh, one of the soft boxes we were looking at with Ella Modella. It uh, <clears throat> it was really big and really expensive. It was a lot cheaper. <laughs> Sounds oh, yeah. like a good idea. It I is. And having something like that Plexi, it, it does double and triple duty because I'm, I'm not sure if we included any images where I, where I shot on top of that. But if you want to have, if, if sometimes photographers struggle with blowing out the the floor, because it's easy to blow out a background, but getting the floor around the model's feet is a little more challenging. If you use something like a white plexi, it's much more highly reflective, and it tends to go pure white a little more easily. If you don't want it to go white, the other kind of duty that this piece of gear will do for you is it gives you a wonderful reflection and, and more interest and in something else to play with in your image. So we use a you know, big soft box, uh, reflection, um, a, a something some of the model can stand on. It, it's, a, it's a great piece of gear. Uh, to have around a studio. Very nice. I see that you um, went against your rule of 
of uh, open-toed shoes. You know, every now and again, it has to be done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if there's no other options. But, you know, Roxanne, you bring up a great point. I am a, uh, as a model photographer, I probably know more about women's shoes than I should. But <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of closed-toed shoes. Um, I follow the basic rule if the toe is open, that you should only have two toes showing with minimal toe cleavage. But uh, I, I do prefer the toe, close, uh, closed toe shoe. I'm with you on that. <laughs> um, 95% of my shoes are closed toe. Not because awesome. my toes are unattractive. I just don't like them showing. That's yeah. an awesome tip. In fact, I should take some foot photos in case we have fans that are interested. Just in case. <laughs> or maybe strange. I but... kid. I... <laughs> so one of the things that I wanted to point out on this image that I really like is that the exposure has been brought up high enough that you've accentuated her figure. You've actually thinned her down with the exposure. And then the arm shades her bosom enough that it's left completely intact and pretty brilliantly done. Yeah, it's a number one, this is a great model to work with. And, and she did a lot of this just through, through tremendous posing. But I, I love that you bring up the, and this is a wonderful technique because there are very few models that want to appear larger. And most do want to appear a little bit thinner. And, and shooting on that white background, if I, when you bring up the light, as you, as you mentioned, you can use that light as it wraps around the body. It's a tremendous slimming effect. Mm -hmm. And one of the techniques that you can use to, to help there, if you don't want to, many times you don't want to run your light, the lighting power itself substantially higher because that does some other things to your overall exposure. But if you want the light to wrap around your model, you want to make that light even softer. So in this case, we took our model and put her about a foot in front of that backdrop. So the closer the model is to the light, the more the light's going to wrap around, which does give us that wonderful slimming effect here. And for all the other detail across the shot, um, a little bit uh, of changing the angle. And then, like I said, I, my, my technique on silhouettes is I tend not to shoot them. Well, I tend to shoot them a lot lighter than most people do. That way I can pick and choose what I want to do with tonality across a body so I can hide and reveal selectively later in the post-production. So it, this, this was a fun shot, and um, like I said the model did great. Lighting worked out. This, this has been remarkably popular. So for any of the listeners that are paying extremely close attention to this uh, free advice, you should also pony up, come to the Central Coast, and take a class. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, to learn this technique of, of uh, silhouette type stuff there, it, it takes about two hours, but then you will have it forever because it's just not that hard. I love these bodyscapes. <laughs> this is so neat. Um, I'm sure the, the moon has to have been put into that yeah. image, right? Oh, absolutely. This is a composite. Yeah. If it wasn't, I was going to be thoroughly uh, impressed. Hey, it I could mean, have happened, but yeah, that's like incredible. It would, it, would be, uh, it would be tough. I think at the right focal length, you probably could do it, but it's going to be a challenge. Well, with this, um, the moon, it looks like the moon is actually lighting her her back and butt. I'm trying to think of how to <laughs> describe that full area. The I whole lower the portion. The term is took us. Yeah, what did you say? Took us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, took us. <laughs> yeah, this, this, was a, this was a fun shot. The Actually, the model in this one is the same model who was just uh, in, in the previous shot. Uh, and Actually, the same shoot, quite honestly. We had transitioned from a, a white background to black. And we do a lot of stuff as well where, you know, much more of a low-key feel, still a black and white high contrast shot, but using light to, to illuminate uh, certain curves on a body. Um, so this was initially shot with a 1x4 a strip softbox, and it was a vertical. And then we used it for a lot of other things. And then this, the moon came from maybe two or three months ago. Uh, it was one of the most recent super moons. And living down here in Los Osos, unfortunately, the the fog can come in every now and again. So I was forced to shoot the moon before it was in front of anything interesting. And I had this, this what I thought was a pretty strong moon shot. And everyone was posting super moon things. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make my composite. I'll take the super moon, drop it into this uh, this bodyscape. And it worked really well. It did. I bet people were jealous that you had yeah. a model in front of your moon. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I'd put this, I said, hey, there's my shot, the supermoon in the Los Osos Hills. And I, I had quite a few people ask me where in the hell these Los Osos Hills are because they need to find something that looks like that. And 
You know, I'm yeah. thinking if I show up to one of the big astronomy groups and I put out a couch and start laying a naked model on it, I'm going to be really popular. Just, just saying. I, I think you would be. I just want to point out that those that there's two moons in that image. There are two moons in that image. Very nice. That is correct. I had to go there. <laughs> This is this a fitness model because there's some muscle there. This is a a model from Los Angeles. I think it's actually just from uh, Hollywood. Had it came up a few years ago when we were doing the the silhouette project. And this one has been I didn't initially include it, but I had Victoria check everything and she thought that I needed to put this one in because we we have this as a print in, in our school here and people just absolutely love it. Um you can add because me to that list. Yeah, it's a it's a neat shot, and she was a a tremendous model. And and what I liked about working with the model is that she was a lot curvier than most models are. And, and I really enjoy a, a curvier model when working with with these bodyscapes because it gives the light something to play across, and you get these wonderful transitions, and you can do some pretty amazing things. So we we did use the light to to slim just a little bit across the hips, but. Other than that, we, we've got all these amazing, gorgeous curves, and using the light uh, in a specific manner, it can be a fun shot without really showing anything. Yeah. Got Two no curves doubt. in particular are very They're prominent. prevalent. Yeah. <laughs> they tend to jump out a little bit, yes. Yes. Very nice. Very nice use of light. <laughs> hey, I've been to this facility. <laughs> you have been there. You, you are a test model at that facility. You can I share. Was. Where is this? <laughs> Am I allowed to share how? You know, I don't think we should, just in I case. Agree. I agree. I haven't cleared I it with that uh, property owner. I would uh, say to, that it would tell be. tell everybody about it. It would be but better if we didn't mention that. <laughs> this is a really neat place, though, in Paso Robles. Uh, I, I can say that it is a winery there. And it's not only spectacular wine, but but a gorgeous facility. Uh, the, the owner is a great guy, uh, also a tremendous photographer. And... The images there, just you can make some amazing shots at that location. Um, light can sometimes be a little tricky, but it's a neat place. <laughs> it's a real neat place. Nothing opens up the door to doing a photo shoot somewhere than finding out the owner is a photographer. That's true. It, it really helps. And, and he told me that was the case. And then when we were out doing some classwork, he showed up with a, a 5D Mark II and a 70 to 200 f2.8. Uh, L series lens, so I knew he was real serious about it. So we just we brought him into the class, and he started photographing right alongside all of our all of our students. <laughs> um, but yeah, this this was a neat shot. This is all. I think everything here is shot with just uh, all it is, is is the sun and a reflector. Hmm. But but a fairly neat place. Uh, the initial shot was I liked the initial shot. I did find it just a bit boring. Uh, so I, I took it in. I got a lot of the color and texture out of this in after capture processing using a, a little product called Topaz Restyle. Oh, yes. And it was a one-click it was a one -click adjustment and, and went to this, and I absolutely loved it. The walls, right? Yeah, it, it does some fun little sort of texture mapping, almost like an HDR process. Yeah, yeah it, it's a neat piece of software. So you texturized the walls in the back, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. We changed the, the, the program changed the contrast on the walls. It just it goes in and it maps out your image into five tonal regions, assigns them a slightly different uh, tonality, and puts a color on each of those regions. And you get some really neat stuff with with one click of a mouse. So uh, I love the simplicity of it and, and the results you get from that that single mouse click. This is also a, a prime example of triangles again. Oh yeah, no, no doubt, great no doubt use, about it. Great use of that. So yeah, when you think about some of this software, some people are like, "Oh, that's cheating." It's like, okay, the goal is the image, and as one of my buddies says, pixels are to be punished. <laughs> but um, the uh, yeah, you think about the software engineer who's like, "I've got this idea," and and I swear they must just see like the matrix, just numbers rolling over everything, <laughs> because they come out two weeks later and they're like, "Click on that," and you're like, "Oh crap." It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's amazing. The, the folks at Topaz Labs, I've been fortunate to to visit their their development office, which is relatively small. It has six or seven people in it, and these guys are absolutely brilliant. And and they they give you if you if you choose to go that route in after capture processing, they give you an easy way to do it. Yeah, no doubt. Is this next one Vanessa? Uh, it is. I thought it is. I recognized her. Hmm. Somebody yeah, local. This, 
She uh, she used, used to, to be. be. Used to be. I I have an image in my portfolio with her. Oh. Yeah, I think that's one of the places that uh, Roxanne, you shot with her. Well, it's probably been three years ago now. God, maybe even four. It's been like three and a half. Yeah, three and a half years. I think it was at the first festival. Yeah. But yeah, a tremendous model. And this was just, you know, kind of, t I wanted to show that that opposite of the high contrast black and white silhouette, which is just one of my favorite things, as, I, as I've said a couple times, a couple well-placed soft boxes. In this case, one well-placed soft box is really a photographer's friend. Um, people ask me all the time, you know, what, what's, what do I need to have in my studio? And they ask, I said, well, what do you want to photograph? And, and many folks say, okay, I want to photograph women. And, and the thing to have is at a bare minimum, we get two lights, two strip soft boxes. And with those properly positioned, it's amazing what you can do because in this case, okay, we, we've got a single strip light. We've got the rest of the body falling off into blackness on what would be the viewer's right side, mm -hmm. model's left. It, it's a remarkably slimming light. It, is a, it can be a very modest light. Uh, it, it is really pretty cool how that single strip can play across the body, either concealing or revealing selectively. Really, really neat stuff. Well, it is a striking image and a striking model. She, she is beautiful. Yes. I yeah, really like her body type. Remarkably well, fun to work with, and it just bottom line, she's a good person. Mm -hmm. I, oh, and does that ever help? <laughs> I've been out wine tasting with her. <laughs> I I have worked with some models that were unbelievably beautiful, and I never want to see them again in my life. Yeah, <laughs> the personality makes the model. It does it really does? And that, if I could just kind of uh, go a little bit further with it, the we always say here that the the thing that really determines the success of a photograph, it's how the two personalities play, the, the photographer and the model, and the rapport they have is more important than the the idea, the location, the lights, the cameras. It's the rapport. If you've got that, you can make a good picture. That's true. This next one is amazing. Well, having a nice backside helps too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. It's just like the, the image that's in the image. It's that Marilyn Monroe feel. It's the voluptuous and the, voluptuous, I should say, um, the red lips, the, the waved hair, just so classic and beautiful. Yeah, when I first saw it, I thought it might be a body paint. No, those panties oh, just hug. The, yeah, they hug really well. Yeah, and they're all... Uh, th this model, if you've never followed her, uh, th this is Miss Mosh, and she is tremendous and uh, just amazingly talented, uh, fun to work with. We bring her up here quite often in classes and then just to photograph. This was one of the, the personal shoots that we did with her a couple of days after a class because I just I didn't get to take enough pictures of her during the class. Uh, but we, we kind of knew the location, and she has this amazing, amazing wardrobe. And she'll bring three or four large, large suitcases with her. And we went through and allowed her to pick out the outfit that she thought would correspond with this somewhat retro-looking environment. And having that picture of Marilyn in the back with the way she did her hair and the posing and the, the vintage clothes, it just really worked. It's Wait, amazing. is this the one that has all the latex outfits? She does a lot of latex as well. I think I did one of your, um, one of your classes with her. You bet. You were there with Mosh. Uh, it's probably been two years ago now. Yeah. Yeah, I think that day she had the uh, the blue and kind of yellow latex and then also brought out the, uh, the I don't know, I'll call it the torture girdle. Yes, that the one that makes your wa <laughs> her waist like three inches wide. Exactly. Crazy. All, all of her insides have to be up and down. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's remarkably talented and has a tremendous body of work and... If you're fortunate enough to photograph this lady, she's it's fun. But with with that being said, be on your game because uh, she will call you out if you're not. That was hilarious. Nice. <laughs> that shoot, she chewed out one of the photographers. Nice. You don't you don't tell me what to do. You take the picture. I pose in front of everyone, and the guy was like, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> And, and it's very rare that you have a model who is so incredibly talented and that, that she knows what looks good. And when she hit, when Brendan, regardless of where the photographer might be in the, in the lights, she's already calculated out what the angles are for her face, that she knows the pose is going to look good. And when she hits that pose, you need to be taking the shot. You nice. really do. <laughs> <laughs> she was very good. 
I will put her on my list of people to photograph and then be very cautious. <laughs> yeah, with, like I said, her name is Miss Mosh. She has uh, some tremendous stuff out there. Uh, her own personal website is great. Uh, she does a lot of burlesque shows these days, and they're remarkably entertaining. Uh, she's just she's a, a fun lady. We'll get and, her and link it, in the show notes. Oh, absolutely. She is. She's she's fun. <laughs> this is so elegant and beautiful. This next one, the drape the drape that she has over her is just it just makes the photo elegant. Yeah. There's no other way to put it. Yeah, and this is a and this is obviously Mosh as well. Uh, for so the same woman who was in the previous photograph. And what I like about – one of the things I like about photographing Mosh is that very few people photograph her in this way. And I found this to be – it is a – I don't want to say most of her stuff isn't uh, – it's just different. It's, it's somewhat fetishy. It's somewhat retro. Um, it's very edgy and avant-garde. Whereas this, it's very simple. It's elegant. And it's a neat piece. It really is kind of fun. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, this was shot – that same day where we were in, where she was in the pink outfit before, and we just came back to the studio and thought, hey, let's try something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So I really think it worked out. And this is another example of things that you can do or have in the studio, those little pieces of fabric. Mm -hmm. And this happens to be a, a sheer pink. We also have sheer black and, and sheer brown to get different tonalities in here if you want to highlight more or less of the, of the fabric. But it, it adds something ethereal and soft to the image that I could do in post-production, but why not just get it here? Oh, no. I have a lot of respect for getting things in camera. But yeah, that, that was a fun day. Uh, same model. She's, she's just so much fun. I, I included this just to show some alternatives that photographers have. This, the only light here is the sun, and it's shot at a relatively uh, what most people consider the bad time of day. Mm -hmm. and, but the way we did it was we used an infrared camera. I was going to say, this has got to be infrared. Yeah. yeah. So with, with IR, not only does it open me up into many different times of the day where the, the characteristics of the infrared, the in most cases, pushing it to black and white, the high contrast angles of the day are going to work fairly well. And also the way that skin responds on the infrared sensor, it, it's a very nice smoothing effect. So it, it's a technique that you can use if, if you have skin that's, that maybe doesn't meet the ideal or the, what you would envision for a shoot. Infrared will, will smooth that out substantially. I've been keeping my eyes open waiting for a uh, next generation 7D. And I've thought my, I've got a couple of 4DDs here that should go in and get their uh, infrared filters removed. Oh, absolutely. We, uh, not a plug, I don't, they don't sponsor us or anything, but LifePixel. Uh, lifepixel.com. They do a tremendous job. It is, I think, uh, a one five or one six sensor size right now is two hundred and fifty bucks to get the IR conversion done. It is well worth having in your in your uh, toolkit an infrared camera just to give something a little bit different. Well, we will uh, we will add that to our links and our picks. So head over to the show notes to find that, oh, or check the uh, enhanced podcast. <laughs> Oh, man, you got to have her stand still a long time to make this happen. You know, she was there for most of the night standing still for that. <laughs> That's astonishing. <laughs> She's good. No, obviously a composite. Um, this has been uh, a real fun image. Where a lot of people really liked it. Uh, working with another local model from San Luis Obispo. Uh, great fun to work with. Initial shot came from that silhouette project that we had done. Um, ultimately, I used the shot for something else, but then... When I was out at the photo festival, well, I think it was last year, we had a Star Trails class, and, and the weather just wasn't cooperating, and it wasn't going to happen. So I figured I'd make my own Star Trails, and I, I used the uh, complete cheating technique, which was get on a remarkably stable tripod with a good gimbal head. Oh, no. Point straight up, <laughs> spin around in a, in a nice slow manner, <sighs> and you get the Star Trails, but you can see the clouds in the sky as well. That, that gives some of those light blobs. Uh, image in of, in of itself wasn't going to work, but it, it certainly works when combined with a, a little silhouette studio shot. See, I, uh, I had all of these extremely complex star trail questions about sensor degradation over time and noise, and you spun the camera. That's just wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. 
And we so can talk wrong. those things as well if you'd like. No, no, I think they need to take the class. <laughs> that, it's a beautiful image. I you like know, the I color. Could, I was just thinking I should try doing this effect with my Gigapan. Let it do the spinning. It'd be really stable, really good oh, yeah. at that. Hmm. Yeah, it's a it's the it's the simple cheating poor man Star Trails. I uh, get it all in one shot, um, and it and you can use those for all sorts of cool things. My my favorite use of this has been a, a computer desktop wallpaper. Mm-hmm. So. Do you have anybody teaching a class in Gigapixel? I don't think we have a a dedicated Gigapan type class at, at the festival. Uh, we've run them here at the school as different instructors come through. Mm-hmm. But it's been a couple of years, I think, since we since we've had one. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about that in a future uh, festival. Certainly. I just happen to love anything over about a thousand megapixels. I, I'm nerdy. I can't help it. I, I like a big image as well. <laughs> this image reminds me of the iTunes dance scene. Oh um, God, yes. <laughs> it does. The colors, right? The the model looks Except like Except they dancing. weren't smart enough to have the background. They just had plain. You're right. This would have been better. Plain white. Well, yeah, that's the because other... they're not as creative as Hal. No, I'm not very creative either. I just thought they might work together and you throw them into Photoshop and this is where the magic of blend modes come in. So you don't have to do any masking or anything else. <laughs> it just all comes together with a click of a button. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> a little bit. Um... Have you been bad, Roxanne? Do you need to be punished? <laughs> It does. I was just going to say it does kind of look dominatrix, but I don't know. The mask makes it look a little bit more feminine. Uh, I'm thinking there's a whip just off to the side somewhere you can't see. Okay. So, okay. yes. Maybe I like a riding crop. <laughs> I like that she's like pretty bright against a bright white background, and things that stand out are the heels, the panties, and the mask. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even. That you're looking at her chest right away. It's not even, you're not even drawn to I look straight to, to the eyes, I got to say. Yeah. Which is an accomplishment with a uh, uh, bosom showing. With like that. that much showing. Yes. yes. As I tend to. So it's like you look straight at the face and then down to the panties and then down to the shoes. And it's a, definitely a trail for your eyes. Well, that, that's the, I, Roxanne, what you're hitting there is that, you know, when you look at an image, you'll hear people argue over what you look at first. And it's usually one of two things. It's either the brightest area in the image or it is the area that has the highest level of contrast. And in this case, although we have a a topless model here, the eye does go first to the contrast that is either going to be in, in the mask to eye transition, mask to forehead transition, and, and then to the next level of contrast, which is the uh, the underwear, then down to the heels, through the shadow. And, and it allows the eye to wander here and... I think it's a neat trick that photographers have. Since we know where the viewer's eye is going to go, we can design that into the photograph. Mm-hmm. You know, if I can be a little uh, self-congratulatory or self-promoting, uh, one of the things I love about our podcast is you haven't heard us talk about the lens or the camera brand or, you know, we have talked about how the, you know, how is the peanut butter made from the peanut? It's how does the brain work? How does composure work? And I have been sampling dozens of photography podcasts, and we might be the only people that have noticed there's people in the pictures. Really? That's kind it's of disappointing. Amazing. I mean, it's Just a good thing for amazing. us. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I've magically missed the people that realize photography is about pictures. But um, it seems, you know, you go from podcast to podcast, and they're going, well, I'm using the new 1.8 God knows what this thing is and and completely forgetting that, you know, you're trying to make a picture. The, but the end uh, product, anyway, a little yeah. off with the self-promotion, but I love that we are talking about her eyes. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that, that's none of the gear will ever think, see or feel for you. It's It's up to what you and the model want to do. So that's the thing to focus on yep. because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what they put in your hand. You should be able to make a photograph. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've had so much fun having you on this show, Hal, and I wish that Victoria could have joined us too. You know, she uh, she's doing pretty well, but uh, being six months pregnant, she needs a little bit more rest than I do. So she worked hard <laughs> all day getting that festival ready. I had to go home and eat and get to bed. Understandable. Well, let her know that I said hi. I'll do that. So what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? To get in touch with me, the, the simplest way is via email. That That's hal at lightworkshops.com. I'm sure you'll have a link to that, but if you can't remember that one, just go to our website, lightworkshops.com, and there is a contact form there. It'll come straight away to me, 
If you want to look at anything else social media wise, uh, Facebook, it is Hal Schmidt or Light Photographic Workshops. On Twitter, uh, mine is actually, it's Top Gun Shooter. Uh, I use that just because I, I taught at Top Gun for five years and now I take pictures. So Top Gun Shooter on Twitter, Hal Schmidt on Facebook, lightworkshops.com. You can get all my contact info there. And then the California Photo Festival? California Photo Festival, you're going to find that on the index page at lightworkshops.com. Or if you want to go straight away, californiaphotofest.com, and you'll be there. Fantastic. Wonderful. Well, if anybody's interested in giving some feedback, uh, we uh, would love to have uh, viewer mail. Uh, Picks of the week. Listener mail, I mean. Uh, <laughs> They're listen- viewing the pictures. Yes. Okay. Viewer mail or feedback of any type, preferably positive. <laughs> Get your listener picks in, listener photographs. If you just want to send in something from your portfolio, we set this little time aside to display some of our listener photos. Yeah, we'd appreciate it. So our email is modelphotographyshowcase at gmail.com. Thank you for supporting the show with your feedback. If you can hop over to iTunes and give us some feedback on iTunes and a nice rating, we really appreciate it. Five stars. Five stars? <laughs> Did you say five stars? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> do they do five stars? I think no. they do. I don't think. I think it's four. I don't know. But if you as could. As many stars as you can fit in there. Yes. If you 11. could give us five. Eleven is good. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> yes. Well, you just have to rate enough versions of the show. That's right. That works perfectly. <laughs> well, thank you very much for listening, everyone. And keep on clicking.